March 5th of the hearing. Just want to add that <coughs> after. For, so that's for the request. And then we have to notice it and everything. So um, I was going to say, this is hearing. different than what I've. Yeah, that's just the letter submitted, has to be submitted. Yeah. To have a public hearing to renew it for the other part of it. So this is just a application. Just, yeah, the request for the public hearing, which I tentative, tentatively scheduled for March 5th, and I have to send out all the certified letters. <coughs> yeah, because I've never read this statement before. Did I read it last time? That's what I don't I'm yeah, probably, and then the, the next one is the one. The one we go back and look at. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so we'll uh, reconvene our meeting. Everybody have a good little break? Yes, it's great. <laughs> Much needed. Fresh air. Uh, there we go. Now we got uh, Ron's in, and we're live and with audio. Thank you very much for coming in this evening, Ron. All right. Uh, with that, W, would you care to get into the poll license renewal request? Yep. So this is a petition pursuant to RSA 231 colon 163 for changes in poll and conduit license issued under the authority of the Board of Selectmen of the Town of New Ipswich. The undersigned, in her capacity as town administrator of the town of New Ipswich, New Hampshire, and a resident of New Ipswich, New Hampshire, being a person whose rights and or interests in such capacity are affected by all existing and outstanding so-called poll or conduit license licenses issued pursuant to RSA 231-161 under the authority of the Board of Selectmen of the town of New Ipswich, hereby petitions the Board of Selectmen of the town of New Ipswich acting pursuant to a <laughs> pursuant to authority conferred upon the said Board of Selectmen by virtue of the provisions of RSA 231-163 to adopt the following changes to all current, currently issued and outstanding poll or conduit license heretofore issued by or under the authority of the Board of Selectmen or by their predecessors in office, including but not limited to all licenses currently in effect by orders of the Board of Selectmen or pursuant to all petitions filed pers pursuant to RSA 231-161. By adding the following language to all such poll and conduit license licenses based on the law of New Hampshire, which recognizes that the public good is satisfied if the licenses are assessed real and personal property tax for their use of the public rights of ways for their polls or conduits to wit. In accordance with the requirements of RSA 72 23 I B, the licensed entities and other entity now or however hereafter no you oh my gosh, I can't even talk anymore. Um, now or hereafter using or occupying municipal property pursuant to this license shall be responsible for the payment of and shall pay all properly assessed personal and real property taxes no later than the due date. Furthermore, in accordance with the requirements of RSA 72 23 IB, the licensed entities in any other entity using and or occupying property of the municipality pursuant to this license shall be obligated to pay real and personal property taxes on structures or improvements added by the licenses entities or any other entity using or occupying the property of the municipality pursuant to this license. Failure to pay duly assessed personal and real property taxes when due shall be caused to provide a written notice to the licensed entities to show cause by a date certain specified in this notice <coughs> as to why the in the notice as to why the license should not be terminated for non-payment of the sums due. In accordance with the requirements of RSA 72 23 IB, this license is granted to the licensees subject to that condition that the licensees and any other entity now or hereafter using or occupying municipal property pursuant to this license shall be responsible for notifying within 90 days of the date of this amendment each attacher to a licensee's poll and or licenses conduits. 
by serving a copy of the herewith petition on each such attacher and submitting to the clerk of the town of New Ipswich a complete list of attaches to each pole or conduit in the town, listing the pole or conduit locations of each attacher. Further, the licenses grant granted subject to the condition that the licensees and any other person now or hereafter using or occupying municipal property pursuant to this license shall update annually the information provided to the town with the town clerk on or before May 1st of that year, including the location of any additional attachers, attachers <coughs> including the location of the pole or conduit to which the attachers facilities are attached. Any attachers that have removed their attachment and or any attachers that have had added new attachments. This license is granted upon the condition that the petitioners, licensees, heirs, and assigns shall, to the fullest extent permitted by law, in perpetuity protect, indemnify, save, defend, and hold harmless the town of New Ipswich, including its officials, agents, and employees, from and against any and all liabilities, obligations, claims, damages, penalties, causes of actions, costs, interest, and expenses, including but not limited to reasonable attorney fees by reason of any accident, bodily injury, personal injury, property damage, or death of any person arising from the use of the municipal right-of-way for utility purposes. This license is further granted upon the condition that the petitioners, licensees, heirs, and assigned shall be required to relocate such poles, structures, conduits, cables, and or wires together with protecting fixtures as set forth in said petition upon written request of the town of New Ipswich with a reasonable time frame at no charge to the town. The holders of all currently issued and outstanding licenses include but are not limited to the following. Consolidation, consolidated communications in all successors and assigns, Eversource and all successors and assigns, Comcast and all accessors, successors and assigns. Thank you very much. Ooh. What? <laughs> now, so would you ask for again? <laughs> <laughs> a public well, hearing to renew that. <laughs> what I'm curious about is where is that information filed? And does anybody check and see if we have all the polls being taxed? So the town clerk is assessment? supposed to have, the, so each of those companies is supposed to send a list of their polls mm -hmm. and any attachers to the town clerk. Um, and that's why we renew it every year. Now, I recently got, I think, three different new polls that they're putting on, uh, I think, Davis Village, Emerson Hill, I want to say there was another one. There's three different ones that you guys signed. <coughs> um, so those should be added to the list. And that would be so. the Board of Assessors who and yes, yeah, so then our, sure our assessing there. company makes sure they, they so they, they bill them a lump sum for right of way, um, you know, the assessed value of the right of way, and then they have to pay taxes on that. Hmm. So I would like to request a public hearing on March 5th. Uh, Canada's night is the 27th Correct. of February. Fifth doesn't ring loud for anything. At six p.m. So March fifth is the biggest snow day for the candidates. For the candidates yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. So if we did that at six. I think we'd be good. Okay. You guys agree? Uh, March sixth on a Wednesday. No, on the fifth at six. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Not the sixth and at seven and the seventh at six. <laughs> starting that again. At six o'clock. At six o'clock. We don't want to do five. All right, we can start. Because it's it's not a long process, is it? No. no. So it no. could be if somebody decided to come and. Yeah, if one of the power company riders yeah. wanted to come, but there's. Yeah. They just be able to speak. Yeah. To date, yeah. there haven't been any, but you never know. Uh, yeah, five or six. I'd be, I'd say we do it right at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. Uh, five. That way, they, sure. if we happen to have a half hour long meeting, we can go home. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> True. Never hope. <laughs> <laughs>
ever hopeful. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, so March 5th at 5 p.m. Perfect. Do we have to officially acknowledge the um, receipt of this petition? Or? No, minutes. That's good. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything else? Yes. Yeah. Several things. Um, I had sent you guys, Gary, um, just for your review. It doesn't have to be like read here or anything, but um, the RFP for the um, repairs for the fire truck. If the warrant article passes, he's gonna. There's a couple of edits he needs to make, dates and stuff, but um, <clears throat> he's gonna. If if the the warrant article for the refurb of the fire truck passes, he's gonna. Put that out for bid. When did you send that? Today, late this afternoon. Okay. 4:45. Mm. Um. And then the alarm system has been messing up at the old town hall, and Mark got two quotes. I think I made copies for you guys, but there's two different quotes here. One from. First alarm and electrical services, and the other is from Monadnock Security um, to repair the, the. There's some kind of box or something they have to replace or whatever. What happened to it? Does anyone know? They, we kept getting um, messages from Monadnock Security saying we're getting error messages that. The test signals aren't working at the old town hall, and then it would work, and then it wouldn't work. So something was wrong. <clears throat> we were trying to figure out for a little while. Like for some reason, we were paying for two phone lines there, and we only need one. And I'm not sure what happened, but the Comcast one is the correct one, so we canceled the other one, and um, and then. Um, they wouldn't give me any kind of credit. I called and tried to bother with them, and you know, it hasn't been working. Blah blah blah. And they don't care. They just canceled it. Um, <clears throat> so the Comcast one is the correct one, and then it, it it's not communicating for some reason, or there's something. I don't understand the technical technical stuff. So, but there's the two quotes there. like $30 less expensive than the other and I had Mark call them both to see if they would lower it and they would neither one could do we use both of these no companies this is the <coughs> first time we've priced outside of Manhattan yep Either uh, the security line or GGB maintenance. So there are funds to cover. <coughs> I mean, it wasn't anticipated, but. Right.
think as far as security goes, we just budget for the monthly, monthly fees. They had to keep coming back to fix that because build the building two alarm kept going off. The building two. Okay. Building two alarm. So they had to keep coming back <coughs> to troubleshoot and try to find out where the problem was. Which every time it rains heavy, it still goes off. So there's a, some kind of leak or moisture getting in somehow. <coughs> so it looks like we might be able to get a little bit of money out of the electricity. <laughs> Possibly. Or old town hall. Yeah. That bill went down a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe. I mean, this was what the previous years was. But. Did you find it? Find the money? Yeah. Well, there is also fencing. From 2023, no, no, no. are you talking about? Yeah. Oh. Not 200. No, that's 608, and then 240, 200. I mean, yeah, eight, almost 800. Yeah. Uh, then two lines sticking in G. I don't know how the other ones have panned out. Pretty close. Uh, communication, telephone, and Sell. Looks like there's five thousand. Yeah, that's left. In there. Oh really? Well, there was end of December. I don't, I don't have current. When when was that? Seventy nine hundred dollars that printed? approved, budgeted, and we used twenty two eighty three. When was that? There is uh, some. That one there would fall in line with. More in my uh, fencing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Telephone. In there was that. Where was that, Jason? What's that? The first off, do you feel it's a worthwhile expenditure to get that system? I've got some question about why put any money into it. Well, other than it's a fire alarm. Yeah, and that would be the the one thing that I would be in favor of keeping it up because um, well, we're going to have a Heritage Commission meeting this Thursday. The last meeting we had was we were going to approach the fire department and see if we could have one day events to start peaking interest in that building um, without a fire alarm we would not be able to. Mm -hmm. True. And also I believe Primex would require us to have an alarm Do they? in order to cover it. I'm not 100% sure, but I would kind of assume so. Although, is there one in the fire brigade building? Yeah, if you're going to have any events in there, you need to have a fire alarm. Well, yeah, that yeah. too. So yeah. if that's the case, then yeah. All right, and then of the two quotes, thoughts? I would say since all the other buildings are done with Monogna, that we stay with them. The same company. Well, the other, the other way of looking at it is to try another company and see how. Mm -hmm. See if uh, Mark can like working with them. Or not. Yeah, I don't know. You're looking at what thirty dollars difference. Yeah, there was no difference right. in the price yeah. to, to yeah. speak to. Uh, yeah, yeah. I generally I would go along with that thinking if we're happy with that. can't think of any reason why not to, mm -hmm. especially over just the $30 or, right. you know, the 25 to 30 over. Yeah. Um, but it was great that we did get a, another quote, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that the pricing was in line. Um, yeah, 
So I'll make a motion to accept uh, the Monadnock Securities quote uh, for the repair of the fire detection system uh, in the old town hall with the expenditure to come from what was GGB the GGB account is there a second I'll second that all in favor aye, aye. aye. Oh, I should probably read off the amount it's 2400 2,400 I was paying attention yes, yeah you were, you were. <laughs> I, just, I just wrote it down and I didn't remember it <laughs> yeah, 2400 yeah so yeah. it just said 2400 right. and the other quote was roughly 2375 exactly was that unanimous? I, did, I heard a, yes. I heard a motion yeah. in a second. I didn't hear it. Okay. Okay. And other good news. Um, I went to the um, Southwest Regional Planning Commission yesterday mm -hmm. for the update on the um, SWF. Can you see? Um, the Brownfield Grant and the Brownfield Committee voted to approve the expenditure of a little over $60,000 to do the testing, uh, soil, water, that kind of stuff. They have to bore and whatever they do um, at the old town hall slash next door property. So that was exciting news. Super. Yeah. Good. Any uh, dates? Nope. But it was a little, it was like 61,000. Oh, this is just the. And then the other question would be is that a partial funding? That is, part of it is coming from the Brownfield Committee, and the other part is coming from the DES. So. And then did they have an estimate how much we will, or do we have? For this part of it, we mm -hmm. have no. None. No financial responsibility. Oh, wow. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You're donating this money. <laughs> what do you say? You're no, welcome. not me, but mm -hmm. I looked into it. No, that's good. I'm glad it's there. Yeah, um, 54875 That was one. Is that the old one? February 12th, yeah. So fifty four thousand eight seventy five. From Brownfield. Yep. Uh, well, part of it is Brownfield, and part of it is from. The DES. I have somewhat of the scope of work. I was going to send. I, did, I haven't sent it to you guys, but mm -hmm. I was going to send that out tomorrow. It's the minutes of the February meeting where they approved other stuff. And, I mean the August meeting, but the February twelfth meeting, which was yesterday. Yeah, the August one is where they approved the first part of it, <coughs> and then um, yeah, and then. But I'll, I'll email that whole document to you guys, and it'll be with the minutes next week. <coughs> um, and then more exciting news. Um, Greg is coming in on Friday to start the migration for the .gov emails, finally. Um, so he's going to be here at 8 Friday morning, so I will meet him here. And um, he said it could possibly continue into Monday. Um, so he'd be back on Monday as well. Um, all of the .org emails will still be in effect, but they will be forwarded to the .gov emails. For how long? Ever. How long? Yeah. So 
he said we can't give up that like domain name newipswitch.org townofnewipswitch.org because someone could scoop it up and do mm. bad things with it so we have to keep that didn't you put this ball in motion Lou <coughs> so um, and also I was talking <coughs> to um Primex, they stopped, the, the, every now and again they stopped by, so I was talking to her and letting her know, because cybersecurity is a big thing for them, um, and I was telling her how we were in the process of switching over to the .gov stuff, and she said, there are grants available, I'll send you the information. So, I'm going to look into the grant stuff to see what if we can get cost? reimbursed for a lot. I don't know. Well... <laughs> It's it's just it's more money. Well, it's it's obviously Greg's time, you know, and doing all the stuff that he has to do, and then it's also because you have a .gov domain, you have to have um, a different version of like Microsoft Office and all of that. Should I get uploaded to our email account? So you you won't, but like anyone <coughs> anyone who has like you check your email online. Mm -hmm. We have it at our desk. Okay. So in for in order for us to use Word, Excel, all of that uh -huh. stuff, it has to be an upgraded version for the .gov. And these are domain. the things that the grant covers. Um. Yeah. In like business cards and you know because you have to change all your business cards and that kind of stuff. So. And then, but it's a one-time. The grant. Yeah. Yeah. Like a one-time yep. thing. It's not like. Yep. Yeah. So. Revenue is good as long as. So that means we're gonna get business cards finally. <laughs> Someone mm -hmm. asked me for one. Have you guys? Day. First time ever. What's that? Do you Someone guys want any? I mean. No. <laughs> no. Let's put my phone number everywhere. I know. I noticed that. <laughs> but I want to feel special. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you feel special enough just sitting in the seat? Just put a piece of paper on the telephone to, pole. I'm yeah. special enough to ride the short bus. <laughs> They'll find us. That's been my, uh, yeah. As long as there's no strings attached to <coughs> these grants, Brownfield, I suspect we'll, have, we'll see something come at us. But I could, my suspicions are often proved wrong, so I'll stick with the optimism. There you go. This is just free money. There you go. Well, and it um, sounds like it's to cover one-time expenses and not... Um, not continuing expenses. Yeah, I like to continue for five years, and then no. all of a sudden it goes into the budget. So it can help right. offset the, yeah. um, the cost that we already budgeted for. Correct. Yeah. Needed yep. for. Right. Yeah, that would be great. The, yep. But it is gonna, our, that line is going up. Yeah. Um, for the internet services because of the email Correct. charge. Substantial, yeah. Um, percentage wise, <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And that's all I have. I've got something to, uh, from the deliberative, the school deliberative session last week. I don't know if you noticed it, but they had uh, for I think it was Highbridge and Messenic that um, they had high PFAS numbers. On their water testing. Mm -hmm. We already know about that. Everybody does. And oh, when, do they? when I applied, Everybody. test years, you will. Yeah. When I applied for the um, grant because of Turnpike up the yeah. up the road, um, <clears throat> that we included the amount to give to them that they expended. Oh, okay. In the grant. Mm -hmm. So haven't got reimbursed yet, but. And you know, my my catch was that, or my thought was that originally when we were looking for the other one, or the money for the uh, for the one we were trying to do because it was near the uh, landfill mm -hmm. there, and that the PFAS was supposed to be coming from the dissolving of the plastic in the ground. And it was flowing downhill to go to those. All the way to the school. Isn't and that interesting? Went right over Windblown. Mm -hmm. 
and yet, and uh, now you gotta kind of wonder what's causing it over at the school. So, I think I brought that up when this was originally mm -hmm. presented to us. It's coming out of the air. How um, do we even know? What right? I've seen since then, our state required um, remediation <coughs> process was to give them bottled water. Yep. And I just saw a study that bottled water has 3,500 times the PFAS yep. that well water has. Yep. And so this is the merry-go-round that we're on. Yeah, because it's in the plastic bottle. And everything it's like you a no-brainer. Right. But this and is everything you consume it's has the a glass. <laughs> <laughs> but you put in your mouth on that plastic, that rubber. I know, you just can't get away from it. No, you can't. It's yeah, it's but. in the containers that your shampoo, toothpaste. When I called the EPA, because I had never heard of it when this mm -hmm. first happened, he's like, it's literally in everything. Mm -hmm. yep. There's nothing that it isn't in. So it's if in anything... Your eggs. I mean, right. seriously, yeah. when you think about, you know, you feed the feed know, that you feed the chickens and whatever. That was an interesting thing. The yeah. schools were, uh, were they a lot higher than what we had <coughs> at the yeah. landfill? Because we had, we had like, what, a couple parts per we trillion? Had one part per one trillion part over per trillion. the limit. And they wouldn't let us retest. That's correct. This yeah. is well, the tests were like $9,000 a piece or something like that. Ridiculous. Well, and the other thing is we were only testing one property just that one mm -hmm. now we have to test 15. I so the, um, they've gotten a little more efficient on their testing and it's not nine grand a pop yeah so, so it's <coughs> the grant covered right was the testing aspect there they the, rejected that oh they rejected that portion and I, and I I argued with the guy at the DES I was like we we weren't required previously to test those other properties, but because we found it in there, we had to test it. So why wouldn't that be covered under the grant? Hmm. It's not. Okay, so cool. It's in our Thanks. Budget. It wasn't in the budget. <clears throat> so I mean it was it's it's been paid throughout the year through this past one, but now it is in the budget for twenty four. That's what I meant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't in for twenty three. But because we didn't know about it, so yeah. how could it be? Mm. Um, yeah, it's a bad, bad thing. Anyway, yeah, mm -hmm. another example of policies, procedures, yep, <laughs> creating mm -hmm. problems, and then the bottled water aspect is just mind blowing. Yeah, that would be a part of the, yeah. the fix. So you have to supply we have to that. Pay for their water. I think, we, the water, I think yeah. we said that when yeah. we were like, what? I remember you saying that. Balls. Yeah. But just the correlation to some of the other dialogue and the different scenarios that are going on, it just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. makes you want to just like right? throw out the book. Right? Oh, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Which book's that? Depends on which book. Yeah. <laughs> Not the good book. <laughs> okay. Do you have anything else, Lou? Nothing we can talk about here. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you like to talk about it? Outside? Nothing. <laughs> I'm kidding. Jason? Yeah, I had a fun one. Um, a scout left a message yes. on Debbie's phone line. Said he, part of his promotion was he needed to talk to someone about the Constitution, an elected official about the Constitution. So Debbie asked me, that would possibly interest me. I said, "That's right. This is right up your alley." Well, I was <laughs> trying to downplay it a little. Oh, <laughs> sorry. But yeah, I had a good conversation with him. Good. Um, this young man, and it occurred to me because I have a little um, pocket constitution which I wanted to keep. I only talk over the phone with him, but it occurred to me that these pocket constitutions are really cheap. Um, I think if we had money in the budget, we should put some out in our lobby for free for people to have. Um, because not many of us know, myself included, I needed that book mm -hmm. in case he was going to put me to the test, which he was very gracious to me. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> But 
Oh yeah, so I looked it up. You could buy a hundred of these little booklets for fifty-nine dollars. Oh, I have one in my house on my coffee table. It's from a outfit called National Constitution Something mm -hmm. Society. That's the one. Um, do we have money in here for that? Do you think it would be a good thing? It would be a worthwhile endeavor. Yeah, and it, maybe it doesn't go. But I just looked before the meeting, it was, yeah, $59 for 100 It's part of our framework, the cornerstone, and why we sit at this table. <laughs> Come a long way since then, but. It is. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for $59. And offer them for free, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, especially in these uh, times of culture war, to understand what supposedly we all unite around this document and to mm -hmm. understand what it says is. Should talk to school and just give it to every one of the kids. <coughs> 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 Excuse uh, me. So, and yeah. even to uh, stay away from the budget, I'm sure that that could be funded. Privately, yeah, I'd be happy to be fine. All right, yeah. did you say it was fifty nine dollars? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. Don't everybody jump at once. I'll, I'll pitch in. in. No, I, no, I know we, we all will. <laughs> we'll do that off camera. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I had much. There's a lot that's happened in the last few weeks, but. It's been kind of stormy yeah. <laughs> around here. Hard to remember everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> old to say the least. New business. Um, yeah. I yield the floor. It's okay. He can circle back around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would never. That's only the first turn. I would never do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just had a question. Um, about hometown heroes, yeah. I hadn't heard anything, and uh, we hadn't really appointed like a rep per se, like mm -hmm. or like they haven't contacted or anything. No, I I was thinking about that a couple of weeks ago. And then were the polls ever selected for? Yeah, we worked that out with the DPW. You did okay. Oh, nobody gave it's all me. Good. Nobody gave me the poll numbers, so I could send it into the. So that might be good, yeah. like to let them know, because I know that they're coming up on the spring. If anybody had mm. reached out <coughs> to purchase one of the banners, yeah, I haven't um, heard from anyone. And we did have it on the website. I'll have to um, refresh it. Yeah. Yeah, it would be nice to see it yep. utilized. And if you can give me poll numbers, I can do the. I got the application. But you have to put in specific poll numbers, so that's all I need to send it in to mm. Eversource. So, does uh, Peter have those, or do you? Yeah, we went through. Okay. All right. So Peter should be able to. Yeah. Okay. Ron Stanley and I drove around. Oh, really? Tried to figure out which ones. Mm -hmm. Made people very suspicious as we <laughs> hopped out of the car and took pictures. <laughs> uh, yeah, then we let hometown heroes know, too. Yep. That we're past that point once the approval comes back from Eversource. Okay. I've heard that step is pretty much okayed yep. from them. Yep. Yeah, and that was the last I talked with um, Peter Gillery was that they pretty much Yeah. They don't, care. they don't complain about it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and also that candidates night. Is yes. February twenty seventh at seven PM right here in this meeting room. I sent the emails out today to all the candidates, school board and town offices, town boards. I think I copied you guys on it too. Jason yeah. got one because he's a candidate. But. Yeah. February 27th, that's 7 p.m. 
Yeah, so I sent that email out today to everybody, and I'm going to have Sue posted it. I did a little blarby thing and put it on the website. I told her to put it in all the usual places, which includes Facebook and our website. Okay. And then did you want to discuss this? That you had in a oh, yeah. Um, so, I don't, do you want to discuss that? Um, yeah, well, you can just generalize that there's road damage. Okay. Right? <clears throat> yeah, so there was a truck um, that got, went up Old Tenny yesterday trying to de deliver somewhere, and he got stuck. This looks like that happened on Sunday, huh? Uh, Monday. Yeah, I guess so. Why was a semi going up Old Tenny Road? Because he got wrong directions. Yeah. He couldn't make it to the top of the hill behind the ambulance bay, so he backed down and got stuck. Is there a <coughs> sign on there saying no through trucks? Probably not. I don't know. Is I mean, it's a dirt road. road. Is that a um, scenic road? No. I think for a not. portion of it. I mean, this just I came up actually within the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah. Somebody had referred to as the old tenny as one of the roads in town that could never be paved. Yeah. 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 Which the residents yeah. do not want it paved. Well, not just the residents, but I wonder if it is has a designation or a section of it because they referred to the top section. Oh. So I don't know if it's only one part mm -hmm. of it may be classified one way or another. Um, so that'd be good to look into and let so. you know, the road committee know as well if it's not already designated. So um, Peter sent that to me to ask me to forward it to you guys and he was wondering, so Keegan greeted it <coughs> at eight o'clock at night so traffic could be open for one lane and then they went back yesterday to fix it. Um, do you guys think we should send a bill to company for our man hours and gravel to fix the road I think if it's not posted then we'd have a hard time justifying it that's my opinion and perhaps we should post it yeah Well, it's just here that Vanguard you know, told them. With, uh, we're trying to stay away from all, like, it, um, stating any names or anything. Mm -hmm. So, just so that's why we're going ahead with it in the open session. So, it's just a general conversation of whether or not we should charge. It doesn't matter who, you know, either the trucking company or another company, or try to find fault in one way or not. Um, but it does make sense that if it's not posted, Right. Yeah, how would they right. know any different? Um, yeah. And that would be a prime road to have something like uh, no through trucking on because it's pretty unstable most times of the year. Right. True. Irregardless and of it's weather. Dirt and it's a hill. Windy. Yeah, there's one pretty yeah. sharp turn, uh, turn, which is probably the one that he got stuck on. Mm -hmm. uh, and make it yeah, if you uh, look for at the that pitches, size truck. Yeah. The pitches are all attached in the email I sent. So uh, I guess that what we would need to do is just look at if it's posted or not, and then if it's not, um, get okay. Peter's recommendation for what type of posting it would need. Okay. <coughs> so that it, this wouldn't occur again. It would be nice to find out the status of that road too. If it is a scenic or historic, or why did somebody tell us that road can never be paved? Mm -hmm. Where did you learn that? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I... I just heard it from somebody. I don't a, remember what we were talking about. Within the last couple of few weeks. That's I, when heard I heard it. it was at the same time frame, or... It must be, yeah. So I, I heard it about. will never be paved because the people don't want it. I never heard that it can't be. I don't, but, yeah. I mean, that doesn't so I heard, mean anything. So I heard it can't be. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Okay. 
Yeah, we didn't talk about that at the road committee. Um, whether people have a say or not, and really they have an opinion, mm -hmm. and yeah. they're free to bring an opinion, but the town has the ultimate say whether it makes sense to pave or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's also some questions that I had received from a community member regarding uh, Lower Pratt Pond Road um, and whether or not that would ever be improved or not. And if it was um, making me and the board aware that the road as it currently is situated it isn't 100% accurate because of a property owner that actually cut off access. Like it, there's a through road point. I can't remember what mm. um, he had mentioned what it was. Um, but he felt like that was done improperly and the uh, select boards over time or whenever it occurred chose not to um, dispute that property owner from uh, barricading one end or cutting off access from one end. Um, I don't know when it occurred or any, and he couldn't give me any type of time frame really. So hmm. it was just a, a heads up that if we were going to be doing things down there, we may want to look at reestablishing that uh, roadway in whole in its entirety and not just the one portion that it looks like <coughs> currently exists time to whip out the high road to travel <clears throat> you're saying to take it and I haven't gone down there to take a look at it yet this like, person was saying potentially to turn it into a town road the whole length or just because lower Pratt would for the town owned portion and somewhere near that dam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about, that stretch. You're not talking about. Correct, that. yeah, the town owned portion. Just that town. And, but then there was another, there's some other way that it went originally mm -hmm. instead of the way that it is. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and it's never been and legally. Not that he knew of. I think it may depend on how long ago that was. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. I'll have to check my hard road to travel though. So I just had that call yesterday and haven't had a chance to go riding around down there and mm. putting eyes on it. So I, I uh, apologize for being vague, uh, but I just wanted to get it out there Put before I went and looked at it and then yep. we candid this night, the vote, and <laughs> it's gone. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's all I have. Cool. Myself for this evening. Second call, Jason. Unless we wanted to go over the deliberative. Well, I did have a thought on the deliberative, the town deliberative. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, that fire chief position, I was disappointed that there wasn't an engaged <coughs> debate. Oh, from the community. Yeah, from yeah. the community. It would have been good to hear s people's opinions, but that's all it is, is just a thought. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, and all in all, it was really the conversations that were had uh, that evening, I felt were productive and went really well. Um, one aspect that I was concerned that nobody really questioned was the three zoning amendments that are being proposed. Because uh, when you read those, it's tough to ascertain what, what the is going are. on and how it's going to impact us as a community and property owners. So um, I brought that up at the planning board meeting last week and D is going to be writing something up uh, to explain it and probably posting it in the paper and disseminating it, you know, to kind of give so, the background on each one. Yeah. And, and I mean, they had public hearings regarding each one. No one probably showed up, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. No. So can't complain if you don't. Yeah. No, but yeah, it's still good to know well, why yeah. you're voting no, yes absolutely. or no. Like either yeah. way on it. Right. Yeah. So. Yep, I agree. Um, and her uh, <clears throat> explanation will be unbiased and just fact based. 
of you know what it is how right. optimistic you are <laughs> <laughs> always <laughs> I think that's what gets us by here <clears throat> um, but yeah no I was, I was pretty happy you know with how many people came out um, could use some more townspeople as always but again the dialogue was good productive um, yeah we had between 75 and 80 people there I think most of them you know serve in some capacity you know for the town but yeah. there was you know a I fair amount of community you. members yeah. as well yeah. Yeah. yeah I had the, I got the numbers too I can't remember how much they how many there were there were how many registered voters I don't remember what the number was. Seventy-six, maybe. Yeah, that's a number I heard too. And then the amount of uh, buy-in and understanding, like even from the FAC to the department heads and the different community members that put more in articles forth. Um, you know, it was, it was nice to see you know, the library wanted to stand and defend their budget at deliberative and not just. You know, sit in the seat and wait for a question to come, but to right. be proactive. Same with the fire department uh, folks. Yeah. Um, and I know the uh, planning board had uh, reps available to answer for if the zoning. There any questions, yeah. Yeah, as well. Um, but then in the future, may even want to do like a presentation during um, deliberative as well. So I'd encourage anybody, you know, that wants to speak to their warrant articles to do the same. Is what happened because that was really mm. uh, good to have. Yeah, uh, they're the best ones to be able to explain it. Right, those are the ones impassioned and you know wanting to make those changes uh, for the town office and our community as a whole. So. And um, candidates night in the the letter that I'm gonna have Sue post on the website and Facebook and everything and the invite. I also said if you wanted to run for a position but didn't declare your candidacy in time, you're more than welcome to come speak as well. I mean, in case they wanted to have like a writing campaign or something like that, because I didn't. I know there were two people that I had talked to that missed the deadline, but they wanted to run for something. So. Yeah, no opposition I mean, to that. Yeah. No. I mean, no, no. the more people that get involved, the better. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> and I also did have one person request to withdraw their name. And I talked to Bob Rommel about that, and he said, absolutely not. Once you declare your candidacy, candidacy you're on the ballot. And, um, I mean, if you wanted to put something on your personal Facebook page saying, hey, I declared candidacy, but I'm not running, please support somebody else, or, or just say you're not, you know, don't vote for me, you can do that, but you as far as... Outside the Gym on yeah, day. don't vote for me. Don't vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is the case, I guess. If you once you declare, you're you're in. Yeah. <coughs> oh, and um, it was also brought to our attention. I know we touched on this a little bit um, privately, you and I. But the fact that um, there is an error in the posting of the warrant. Um, in regards to the town clerk tax collector position um, that should have been on the warrant this year because uh, Lisa should have been running like for that seat um, so the op the only options that are available to us now because that wasn't identified until after deliberative, deliberative um, actually yeah just before deliberative but we couldn't even change that deliberative yeah. because it wasn't a line on the warrant right um, is that essentially her seat will be um, vacant after the election and it'll be up to us to um, either reappoint her or appoint someone else for a term of one year leading up to uh, the, tw uh, the vote in 2025 and then that person will have to run um, officially on that ballot for a two-year position for a two-year position so who keeps track of these terms clearly no one <laughs> Well, someone has no, to. No, we. Yeah, I mean, it, it just totally missed it. I, I mean, Lisa and I had a conversation about it afterwards when because Bob pointed it out to me, and I was like, because oh. it was on our. It was on last, last year. year. She had to run for one, one year. One year to finish my term. Yeah. And we were thinking, I, I don't know. I, I didn't even look at it, and he looked at last year's, and he was like, um. 
so he called the state and all of that and <clears throat> the solution is that you have to declare at, at the polls pretty much at the end of the night declare that position <clears throat> excuse me empty and then appoint someone and they can get sworn in so we're not without a time so it doesn't support. become a write-in you can't there's post no the position there's no spot to put it in Okay. You can't add any positions. Because nobody put in, you know, even if nobody was running as... No. The, the position itself, the seat itself, nothing was on not warrant. on the warrant. It's not on the warrant. So you can't okay. add it. You can't amend it. Because that was okay. our first thought, is can we amend it and add it at the deliberative session? But you can't. So we all bear so. responsibility if we sign that. Mm-hmm. to keep track of it all but <coughs> whoever we appoint would be for one year right correct yeah and then in 2025 that person would have to run for two years for two years to complete the three-year term <coughs> i think a part of the um messed up my like the planning board how many seats are open on the planning board might have contributed to some of that because uh, it can get kind of confusing with all the different um, term expirations and, right. and people when people resign down and, and everything changes yeah. uh, but there is you do have a list of, I have a spreadsheet yeah. yeah yeah so there is a way to double check and um, so we had to have that on our double check list for next year yeah yeah send it out to everybody hey does anybody know anybody who needs to run for anything yeah. <clears throat> and same thing with um, supervisors of the checklist but we caught that in time because supervisors of the checklist and moderator um, are always in even years mm -hmm. they're not in the odd years but we had supervisor last year but to correct it it's this year again well, too. This way, if I remember correctly, the supervisor checklist was for six years or something? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> but it can't, it throws it all off if it's on an odd year, so you have to keep the cycles keep it, okay. right. So, yeah. Yeah. With that, I wish we could say, say that we're adjourning, but I believe um, if you all have the fortitude to discuss um, some of the aspects of our first non-public um, I would like to do that this evening uh, yeah. alright so with that Ron thank you very much for coming in